Our story opens today on the campus of a large Minnesota college, the University of Wasamata. Inside the administration building, an important meeting is taking place. I don't want to alarm you, gentlemen, but it looks like disaster for what's the matter, you. Well, what's a disaster? Oh, you mean? What's a disaster? What did he say? The Chancellor said we're facing disaster. Sing what? Disaster. I don't know the words. How about Camp Town races instead? Uh, gentlemen, unless we do something quickly, we will meet our doom. What did he say? Doom, doom, doom. The camp town lady sing this song. Do da, do da. Please, this is no time for levity. Our enrollment has dropped 80%. Our buildings are crumbling away. And what's even worse? Yes, yes, yes. yes. They're taking the Coke machine out of the faculty lounge. Oh, horror. But why, why? The answer is simple, gentlemen. What does every successful university have that we don't have? Well-heeled alumni? Electric light? The address of the Ford Foundation? No, a successful football team. Do we even have a football team? Yes, what's the matter? You did have a team of sorts, but it hadn't scored a goal in 22 years. And it's time we did. Oh, I don't know. Seems a shame to spoil a perfect record like that. But Coach Rocky Canute had something to say about that. I move we get the best football team money can buy. Here, yeah, yeah. here. But how will we pay for it? How else? We'll fire a few English teachers. Yeah, who needs them? We all speak English already. Some of us do, anyway. Uh, you incinerating that I'm dumb? That you what? Dumb. 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 Going to run all night. Going to run all day. And so it was settled. Five professors were sacked and five football scouts were hired. All right, you guys, I want you to scour the city. Comb the countryside, and especially beat the bushes. Why beat the bushes? The kind of fellas we want are probably living in them. Now go on. The Scots sought high and low for candidates for football glory. They poked into every nook and cranny in the state. A couple of them even went further than that. They got completely lost, and as a result, wound up in Frostbite Falls, whereas fate would have it, Rocket Squirrel chose that moment to say... Gosh, Bullwinkle, I'm making a salami souffle, and I'm all out of whipple powder. Dead! This is fraught with portent! What's fraught with portent? This picture, see? There's Eddie Frost and George Portent, my spellers. Bowwinkle, I gotta get down to the store and back before the salami souffle flops. Stop snuffling and speak up! Well, give me a hand, Bowwinkle. Delighted! Hurry! Ooh. And propelled by mighty moose muscle, Rocky Flash cleared to town into the grocery store and back before you can say Jack Robinson! Jack Robinson! Here I am! By golly, I couldn't have that. Of course, all this hadn't gone unnoticed. You know what this means, Chauncey? Certainly, a fluffy souffle. No, it means we found the football sensation of the year. I think he's too furry for a football. And that tail. Not the squirrel, the moose. He's the wrong shape for a football. But he's the right shape for a passer. Come on. And the two scouts dashed into Bullwinkle, pen in hand. Sign here, fella. It's a college scholarship. A scholarship? Yep. Certainly, I can see it at a glance, you're brainy. Yeah. You're intelligent. Yeah. You're brilliant. Yeah. Then why don't you sign? I forget how to make a B. Well, maybe he'll remember next time in a college for two or rock and rolls. Last time, you remember, the trustees of Wasamata U were wondering how to keep their college from going bankrupt. How about giving an honorary degree to Danny Warbucks? You, Nanny, he's only a make-believe character. We're real? In the end, of course, they followed the lead of so many other colleges. They decided to get a winning football team. As a result, two scouts are trying to sign a Bullwinkle. Bullwinkle, you know who these fellas are? Pick and Pat? No. Gallagher and Sheen? No. Null and Void? Fair and Wormy? No, they're scouts. If they're scouts, let's see them rub two sticks together. They're football scouts. Then let's see them rub two footballs together. Let's check the little old rule book, Edgar. Uh-oh. Rubble? Says here we can enroll anybody except the moose. Let me say that. Oh, Chauncey, that doesn't say moose. No. That's mouse. Ha, diggity! Come on, sign. Okay. X. Bowwinkle, you know how to spell your name. Yeah, but I don't want to look like a show-off. That's Humble, not... that's me. Yeah, but... Mr. Modesty. But... When it comes to humility, I'm the greatest. So I see. And so it came to pass that a few days later, Bullwinkle Moose arrived on the campus of What's the Matter You? It's like a beautiful dream, Rock. There must be a catch in it somewhere. You sure you got everything, Bullwinkle? Well, let's see. I'm wearing my bell-bottom trousers and three-tone shoes. Yeah. I got my ukulele and my hair stick'em. Uh-huh. Do you have your textbooks? 
Don't bother me with details, Rock. Mr. Moose, I'm your counselor. Now, about your classes. I just wear them to read. No, no, your classes. I gotta go to classes? Of course. I told you there was a catch in it somewhere. Now, I'd suggest you take introduction to chemical kinetics, differential calculus, and the history of the Peloponnesian Wars. Take them? I can't even pronounce them. Boy, they sound tough. I'll never have time to play football. Oh, you're a football player? The frostbite falls flash. Want to see my clippings? From your last game? No, from my last haircut. It won't be necessary. You'll take the regular classes for an athletic scholarship. Which are? Personal grooming, crocheting, and reading modern classics. That last one sounds tough. What modern classic do I have to read? Dick and Jane at the seashore. Well, that's more like it. I'm afraid so. Well, how you making out, Flash? Just dandy fool, Mr. Scout. You know who this is? Of course. The Scoutmaster. No, this is our coach, Rocky Canute. Put it there, pal. Oh, thanks a mill. It was getting a mite heavy. Uh, maybe you better suit up, Moose. In a few moments, Bullwinkle was attired in his very own football uniform. Bullwinkle, you're barefoot. Yeah, I like to feel my toes grip the earth. Besides, they didn't have any size 22s. Well, let's see you throw one, Moose. Throw a game already? I haven't even started practicing yet. Not a game, a pass. Let's see you throw a forward pass. Okay. How's this? And Bullwinkle faded back, cocked his arm, and fired a forward pass that traveled... A miserable ten feet and fell to the ground. How's that, Coach? Coach? Gee, where'd he go? Over in a dead faint, that's where. Well, is this the end of Bullwinkle's sports career? Be sure to see our next episode, The Hidden Ball Play, or Goal is Where You Find It. Well, Bullwinkle's career as a football player had quite a setback last time when Coach Canute said... Well, Moose, do you think you can pass? I don't know. I'll study hard. No, no, I mean a forward pass. Oh, that. Sure. How's this? And Bullwinkle lofted a forward pass that didn't travel more than ten feet. That's a forward pass. It went forward, didn't it? Turn in your suit, Moose. No, wait. I think I know what's wrong, Coach. Let me send her the ball. Okay. One, two, three... Hut. Now, Bullwinkle, Ellie! Ooh. Well, it was the alley oop that did it. The football zoomed into the air, down the field, over the goalpost, out of the stadium, and across the campus toward the administration building. Now, Chancellor, this here stadium will cost you only $7 million, and we can start building on... A lot of money, Mr. Herdlicker. I don't think we... <coughs> What's that? It's a football. How did it get here? Offhand, I'd say it was thrown here by your new fullback. Well, don't just stand there, Herd, like a build something. And immediately, work started on a brand new stadium for What's the Matter You? While on the practice field, Bullwinkle and Rocky worked out with the rest of the team. Oi! Oof! Oh, I got it, I got it! Gee, not so hard, Bullwinkle. That's the third pass receiver we've lost today. We don't lose him, Rock. They pick him up in the next county. But passing wasn't Bullwinkle's only football talent. When he put his head down and charged, he could take out one whole side of the opposing line. That's what I like, a player who uses his head. It's also good for hanging hats on. Came time for Wasamata Yu's first game with the Watchmakers Technical Institute. Or as it is known, tick tock tick. It wasn't a game. It was a slaughter. A minute before the end of the game, with Wasamata Yu leading 66 to nothing, Coach Canute took Bullwinkle out. Immediately, things were different. In the next 60 seconds, Tick Tock Tech scored 60 points. But then the final gun sounded. Well, a big upset like that didn't go unnoticed. Whoa! Look what the newspapers say about the game, Rock. I don't see anything. Look down here. Wasamata 66. Tick tock 60. The type's too small for me to read. But as the season progressed, the headlines got bigger and bigger. Wasamata U, 90. Barely normal, zero. Wasamata 89, pretty poly, zero. Wasamata 150. To Coins Grammar School, zero? A little mix up in the schedule there. What's the matter? Was the only team in the nation which was undefeated and untied. Not untied, we're just a little loose, is all. But on television, every silver lining has a dark cloud, and our show is no different. For in a downtown bat cave in a large city, some professional gamblers were posting betting odds on next week's game.
Oh, boy. You see the odds on what's the matter, you? 200 to 1. Incredible. Well, Natasha, this is it. This is the time for me to turn over a new leaf. What? You know how I am, honey bun. Always destroying things, wrecking them, smashing them up. Yes. Well, now I'm going to do just the opposite of breaking things. You mean? Yes. I'm going to fix a game. He is just the fixer to do it, too. Oh, don't fail to see Wager at Dawn or Early to Bed. Well, the latest sensation of the sports pages these days is what's the matter you? And it's forward passing phenom, Bullwinkle Moose. Look, Natasha, 200 to 1. Some score, darling. Score nothing. Those are the betting odds on what's the matter you. Hmm. Boris, why are you smiling that sneaky little smile? I know Moose can throw passes. I wonder if he could throw a whole game. Meanwhile, it wasn't all cleats and shoulder pads for our heroes. Eager to make good grades, they really had to burn the midnight oil. How come we're burning the midnight oil, Rock? They turn off the electricity at 10 o'clock. Oh, knit one pearl two, knit two pearl one, knit one pearl two. What are you doing, Bullwinkle? Studying for a test. In what? My toughest class, advanced crocheting. Knit one, knit two, pearl one, pearl two. Yeah, but why so fast? I'm cramming. Not that life at What's the Matter You was all work and no play. There were lots of typical collegiate good fellowship and hygiene. Howdy, fellers. How about seeing how many of us can pile into a phone booth? Uh, I don't think we've met, old boy. I know, but how about some typical collegiate good fellowship and hijinks? We could all go over to my place and swallow goldfish. But... There's enough for everybody. I just got my allowance. You must be insane. Come on, chaps. We're all going over to picket Norman Mailer at the Student Union. Gee, Bullwinkle. What am I going to do with 300 goldfish? Well, why don't you... But although Bullwinkle didn't know it, he had an even more serious problem. Well, Natasha, it's great to be back on the campus. Back? Boris, you went to college? Penn State? No. State... Ten. But how are we going to convince Moose he should lose a football game? We got secret weapon, honey bun. Oh, I love secrets. Let's see. Here is secret weapon. <laughs> Boris is me. And thus it was that next day when Bo Winkle and Rocky left the practice field, they were confronted by a weeping figure. Boo-hoo-hoo. Hold it, Bo Winkle. That sounds like a lady in distress. So? Gee, didn't you ever read the hero's handbook? I can never get past the picture of General MacArthur on the cover. Well, Chapter 2 says we should always help ladies in distress. Hi there, lady. Are you in distress? Distress, that dress, who cares? I'm distraught. Do we help ladies in distraught? What's the trouble? It's about next Saturday's game. With Hard Knocks College? Don't worry, we'll mobilize them. That's just it. My little brother is on that team. Your brother? Crazy Legs Cowfuss. And if Hard Knocks doesn't win Saturday, they'll throw him off the team. Gee! They'll take away his sweater. And it's turning cool, too. They won't even let him watch American Bandstand. Is there no pity anywhere? So, your great, big, wonderful moose... That's me, all right. Maybe you could see to it that Hard Knocks wins next Saturday. Why not? Bullwinkle, you can't do that. I'm supposed to help ladies in distress. But Chapter 3 says you never throw a game. Well, you read your chapter, I'll read mine. What was that you called me, Missy? A great, big, wonderful schnook. Sounds different this time. Well, has Bullwinkle fallen prey to Boris and Natasha's vile scheme so quickly? Be with us next time for Standing Room Only or Bullwinkle Sells Out. Well, well, the What's the Matter You football team continues to roll like a juggernaut over its opponents, sparked by the flashy passing combination of Rocky Squirrel and Bull Michael Moose. Ellie! Oop! But Boris Badenov, against all common sense, is betting heavily against What's the Matter. Put all this on Hard Knocks College next Saturday. On Hard Knocks? Fellas, take off your hats. It ain't often we see such touching childlike faith. Mister, you got our sympathy. Put your hats back on. I also got a fiendish plan. And what a plan it was. Natasha, disguised as a forlorn co-ed named Miriam Calvus, convinced Bullwinkle that her brother was on the Hard Knocks Football 11. And if they don't win, he'll be thrown off the team. Never fear, Miriam, dear. Oh, poetry. Isn't it, though? And what's more, curfew shall not ring tonight. What's that mean? I don't know, but it sure sounds impressive. Bullwinkle, I don't think 
think she even has a brother. Yeah, but she sure has long eyelashes. I think she's trying to trick you. Rock, I'm surprised. If she does have a football player for a brother, where is he? Where is this crazy legs calbfuss? You called? You crazy legs calbfuss. Just look. Crazy legs, all right. Well, that did it. The following Saturday, Bullwinkle just wasn't playing his usual game. At the end of three quarters, the score was still nothing to nothing. Boo! Bullwinkle, you fumbled! I bet those eyelashes are two inches long. As a matter of fact, the only reason Hard Knocks hadn't scored was that they were almost as bad a team as what's the matter you? Two, seven, hike. Bullwinkle, you missed him! Go on, Wizard! You're in the clear! And he was, too, but unfortunately, in donning his uniform, Wizard Black had inadvertently tied together the laces of his right and left shoes. As a result... Boy, that's a lucky break. Eyelashes must be three inches long. Hey, you know who we haven't seen on the field yet? Among others, Prince Suvana Fuma. No, Crazy Legs Calfus. Probably saving him for the last quarter. This is the last quarter. Maybe they're four inches long. What are... Miriam's eyelashes. Where? There, in the end zone behind us. Sure enough, Miriam Kalfus. Or as we know her, Natasha Fatal. Was in the stands cheering for hard knocks. Kill the moose! And look who's beside her. Crazy legs. It was a trick. Signal. One, two, three. Hup. Oh, what a dirty guy. I'll get you, crazy legs. Bullwinkle, no. You're running the wrong way. Nobody can make a monkey's uncle out of Bullwinkle, Jay. Oh, boy. You know, Booby, I don't like the look in his eyes. I told you Moose had no sense of humor. Quick as a flash, Burris slipped out of his seat and disappeared into the crowd. Where'd he go? Bowicka, look out! Yes, by now, the mighty Moose stood at the one-foot line, just 12 inches away from scoring the winning goal for his opponents. The Hard Knocks players struggled closer. Gee, these football fields are long. Burris was still ducking through the crowd, and where? Clear at the other end of the field, the Hard Knocks players leaped on Bullwinkle to drive him over the goal. And at that moment, the referee raised his gun to signal the end of the game. Boy, we've had everything in this episode but the kitchen sink. What do you think this is? Well, is what's the matter you doomed to its first defeat? We'll find out in our next excitement-riddled episode, Bullwinkle scores again, or fool's goal. Well, in our last episode, Bullwinkle was just about to make football history. It was the matter you. He's heading for the wrong goal. Right, for in the stands, Bullwinkle had spotted Crazy Legs Cobfuss. Oh, going Crazy Legs. Here I've been taking it easy so he wouldn't get thrown off the team. Now I find out he's not even on it. There you go. And Bullwinkle stopped just one foot short of the wrong goal line with a herd of tacklers coming after him. But just then... Bye-bye, bird brain. <laughs> yes, Burris popped into sight, clear at the other end of the stadium. Oh, Baz, Baz. Things had happened fast and furious. I'm fast and he's furious. So angry was Bullwinkle that he looked around for something to throw at the fleeting Burris. There was only one thing handy, the football. He hurled it just as he was hit by a cloud of tacklers. <laughs> the ball zoomed over the heads of the astonished players. It was clearly headed right out of the stadium. But just as it reached the end zone, a furry streak intercepted it. It's a touchdown! We win! Yay! Ow! Is that the end, Boris? It's not my elbow, honey bun. Let that be a lesson to you, Bullwinkle. Always play your best game no matter what the provocation. Yeah, what the provocation, I always do. As a result of Bullwinkle's performance, Wasamata became the top-ranked team in the country. Their new stadium was packed every weekend with thousands of fans. Wasamata was making money hand over fist over hand. Gentlemen, Bullwinkle Moose is the greatest football attraction since Blue Grain. Isn't that Red Grange, Chancellor? Let's not be controversial, Harkaby. Wasamata is in the black for the first time in history. At last we can afford to get some new teaching equipment. Yes, my world map is so old it still shows the Earth is flat. But nobody believes that. Our current event books say that McKinley is still president. And lots of people believe that. You mean he is, huh? But now we can afford better teaching tools. Gentlemen, you must be mad. Uh, no new equipment? Of course. New athletic equipment. We can't afford to offend Coach Canute. And so in rapid succession, Wasamata built an indoor baseball diamond, a 97-room home for Coach Canute, and a pink marble field house shaped like the Taj Mahal. It's lovely by moonlight. How about another test tube for the physics lab? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, we gotta draw the line somewhere. 
Besides, it's time to meet the latest addition to our faculty, the world's greatest mathematical genius, Dr. Isosceles Digit. Dr. Digit, are you here to start a new math department? Are you kidding, Jack? I'm here to figure out new football plays. And meanwhile, what are those two heels without souls, Boris and Natasha? Yes, what of us, darling? Natasha, there's only one way to fix the game and beat that idiot moose. And that is? We got to get our own football team. And within a few days, Boris had assembled the meanest, toughest gang of rascals and rogues in the state. The Mud City Manglers. Look at them, Natasha. Must I, darling? I just had lunch. And wait till you meet the coach. Darling, who could be mean and cruel enough to coach this mob of killers? Who else? You don't mean. All right, team. A little pep up. Last man out of the huddle is the first man dead. Boris, his fearless leader. Yeah, he's doing a guest shot in this sequence. A guest shot? There goes a guest now. Well, what a team this is for our heroes to face. Be sure to see our next episode, Rogues Gallery, or hold that lineup. Well, it was a big day for Wasamata U when the Chancellor said, Many colleges are de-emphasizing football. Wasamata will re-emphasize it. One of the college's first acts was to sign up the Frostbite Falls Flash, Bullwinkle Moose, who, aided by Rocky the Flying Squirrel, proceeded to decimate the opposition. No, no, we just beat the other team. That's what the man said. Well, why don't he say what he says? But it looked like breakers ahead for Wasamata, for in a carefully guided hideout, Boris Badenov's Mud City Manglers were hard at work. They were a dreadful band of thugs and killers, coached by our old nemesis, fearless leader. And even he had to use a whip and a chair. All right, we'll try number 17. Uh, one, two, three. Ooh. Uh-oh. Strangler fumbled the ball again. Yeah, I bet the coach gives him a light reprimand. Oh, I bet he gives him a severe reprimand. <laughs> you were right. It was just a light reprimand. Yes, with a team of hired goons and criminals, fearless leader was at his best or worst. I want all of you men to read this sign I'm posting in the locker room. Play carefully. The life you save may be your own. But of course, being villains had certain advantages, too. Achtung! Tackle practice. I want you to tackle that dummy as if it were a what's about you run up. Go! <laughs> Terrible! <laughs> Awful! <laughs> Fearless leader, all the sand is running out of the tackling dummy. All right, which one of you stabbed the tackling dummy in the back? It was me. You stabbed a defenseless dummy in the back? Yeah, what of it? Well, congratulations, my boy. You are my kind of folks. From now on, you're captain of the team. That's the way to talk, coach. When I want your approval, I'll ask for it. Yes, yes fearless, fearless leader. leader. All right, I'm asking. Hooray! Meanwhile, in the Chancellor's office at Wasamata U... Hey, you guys. Yes, yes Coach, Coach Canute. I got a letter here from a team I never heard of. Challenging us to a game. What's the team? The Mud City Manglers. Oh, Mud City? Oh, no, 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 no. The challenge game? No, 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 no. They'll pay us a thousand dollars. It's a deal. And so in a short while, the wire services were buzzing with the news. Mud City? Never heard of them. Hmm. Here's the picture of the team. How do they look? They sure got funny-looking helmets on. Helmets? Nothing. That's here. Bullwinkle, those are girls. Yes, to drive the odds even higher, the Wiley Boris had dressed his entire team in curly wigs and mini blouses. Bullwinkle, this is terrible. It is? What kind of game can you play with girls? Boy, this really is a children's show, isn't it? Parcheesy, of course. The photograph caused a sensation. Girls challenge nation's number one team. Debutants to tackle juggernaut. Little did the press of the nation know that the Mud City Manglers were a vicious gang of thieves, blackguards, and unspeakable Turks. All right, girls, and I use the term loosely. Time to check your equipment. Shoulder pads? Check. Yeah. Spike shoes? Check. Poison for spikes? Check. Switchblade knives? Check. Brass knuckles? Check. Hand grenades? Check. Then we're ready. Just remember one thing. Yes. yes. I want you to behave like ladies. Well, these are shady ladies indeed, and we'll see their fiendish plot unfold next time in Mail Bags or Homely are the Brave. What's the matter? Hats off to you. To thy colors, ochre and Alice blue, we will air be faithful and true. 
Hey, oh, what's the matter, hey? Better we should be in jail. Hey, what's the matter, you? The straining stir... The uh, stirring strains of the college fight song herald the big game between what's the matter, you and Boris Badenov's Mud City Manglers. Well, gee, Rock, the Mud City Manglers are girls. They look awful big for girls. I guess football doesn't appeal to the petite ones. And on the way to the football field, Boris and Natasha dash into an illegal betting parlor. Okay, Manny, what's the odds on the big conflict? World War Three, six to five, and pick 'em. No, no, the Wasamata game. Oh, an unbeaten team playing a bunch of girls. Five hundred to one on Wasamata. I'll just take me some of that. I'll bet all this on Mod City. And I'll bet all this. Fearless leader, where did you get all the loot? Bad enough. That is the entire contents of the Pennsylvania Treasury. You carry the Treasury wherever you go. You don't think I'd leave it with those crooks in my government, do you? Who says you can't take it with you? All right, boys, you got a bet, but uh, you're throwing your money away. Who says? I hope he's wrong and you're right, bad enough. Oh, I am, I am. Because there's something else I always carry around with me. A cheery smile? No, my own fire <laughs> one. Oh, boy, Natasha, we really got to make sure of this one. But, darling, we already got fiendish plans. We can't take chances. This time our fiendish plan will have a fiendish plan. And back in our hero's dormitory room... Come on, Bullwinkle, it's time we left for the game. Just a sec, Rock. I'm still studying these new plays. Why? The only play you know is the forward pass. Besides, you're not the quarterback. No, I'm the all-back. Fullback. Yeah. Oh, if our boys only knew, for at that moment, the Wasamata quarterback, Bob Waterbucket, was receiving a caller. I, I don't wear a collar. My neck's too big. Not a collar. A caller. A caller. Oh. Emergency telegram for Bob Waterbucket. That's me. Well, what he did? Uh, it, it's got long words in it. Ooh. Oh, very well. It says your aunt in Azuzi fell down and broke her crown. You should rush right out there. But I can't. I gotta call the big game. In that case, here's another telegram. The president has just declared the national emergency you're drafted. I'll get a deferment. I gotta call the big game. Oh, boy. In that case, here's my third and last emergency telegram. Nothing can stop me from calling that game. It's from a professional football team. They want to hire you for... <laughs> you're not going to call the game? Sure, I'm calling it off. As a result of Waterbucket's sudden departure, Coach Rocky Canute had a tough decision to make. Okay, Moose, you're quarterback. Boo! Oh, come on, fellas. Even the Moose should be able to beat a team of schoolgirls. But as we know, the Mud City Manglers are only disguised as girls. Actually, they're a tough bunch of thugs and plug uglies. But, Bori, suppose the Moose remembers all the plays. What plays? I got the only other copy of the diagrams here. Then what was Moose studying? The diagrams I substituted for them. Which were? For three weeks, the Moose has been studying battle plans for the Civil War. Well, it looks as if the South may rise again. Don't miss mine eyes have seen the gory, or Moose is in the cold, cold ground. Well, there's no turning back now. There really is going to be a game between the Mud City Manglers and the Wasamata U Pigeons. What's more, Bullwinkle is now our quarterback. And what's more, these are the diagrams of the plays we're going to play. And what's more, they're the wrong diagrams. Yes, Boris had switched diagrams, and the hapless moose was now going over a set of battle plans of the Civil War. Or as we call it, the war between the states. Now, wait a minute. Who are you? Colonel Jefferson Beauregard Lisa. Yeah, but you're not part of our story. No, I'm from the League of Confederate Correctors. The League of Confederate Correctors? Every time a program refers to the late unpleasantness as a civil war. Uh, you show up and correct them? That's right, Chug. We call it the war between the states. Yeah, but... I just can't abide the word civil. Meanwhile, in the locker room of the Mud City Manglers... Remember, if any of your opponents walks off the field under his own power... It means 20 lashes. Ah! All right, men, and I use the term loosely, take the field. The team's lined up, and Wasamata kicked to the manglers. <laughs> Instantly, there was a huddle, and when it broke up, nobody appeared to have the ball. Who are we supposed to tackle? Come on, which of you girls has the ball? What do you think I am, a rat? You got it, lady. And before the astonished crowd, the Manglers strolled innocently down the field past the baffled Wasamata players. Then as they reached the goal line, one of the scoundrels pulled the deflated ball from under his mini blouse. Touchdown! Touchdown! 
Any objections, wise guy? Miss, I'll thank you to keep a civil tongue in your head. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, a war between the states, Tom. Oh, boy. Now, wait, Mr. Referee. Did that really count six points? Well, of course not, Rocky. It... Ooh, <laughs> It counted seven points. Well, with the referee intimidated, the manglers had it all their own way. Hup! Pass it, Bullwinkle! Ollie! Hup! Incomplete! Incomplete! The pass? The ball. I use ratty guide root. Let's have it, Sybil. Uh-uh, war between I the... said <laughs> Sybil, not Sybil. Sorry, my... Play the game! Play the game! It was easier said than done. We're close enough to try a little field goal, Bullwinkle. Just kick it between the goal posts. Right, Rock. Hop! The kick looked good until two manglers moved the goal posts. At this rate, we'll never win. We'll be lucky to lose. But on the next play... Bullwinkle, look at this! Good heavens, Rock! You scalped the scat bag. Scout nothing! This is a wig! Bullwinkle... They aren't girls at all. Oh, darn. What's the matter? I was going to ask the halfback to the prom tonight. Well, anyway, it's our ball. Yeah, but look at that defensive line. Pokey Smoke, they've dug trenches. And they've all got guns. Mr. Referee, how about calling a penalty? Oh, I will, Rocky. Five yards against Wasimata for delaying the game. Don't you have any courage? Yes, but I've also got a wife and kitties. And with a score seven to nothing, the hands of the clock crept closer to defeat for our boys and triumph for Boris Badenov. Don't miss our next episode, Bullwinkle's Battle Plans or Civil Def... Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, war between the states defense. That is not funny. I know. I can't abide jokes, neither. In our last episode, you remember, Wasamata's football future looked very dim. First, Boris Baranov's Mud City Manglers had intimidated the referee. Intimidated? Heck, I'm terrified. Then they had turned their defensive game into trench warfare, complete with barbed wire and gun emplacements. And to make matters even worse, Boris had stolen all of Wasamata's plays. Natasha, now I think I'll take up smoking cigars. Why now? <laughs> so I can light one with these football plays. Other people use a hundred dollar bill, darling. Right now, these are worth a million. Yes, they were, for Boris had made hundreds of bets on the game in illegal gambling joints all over the nation. Hey, Manny, it looks like that girl's team is gonna beat Wasamata, you. Don't worry, Lefty, I'm prepared. You're gonna pay off? You kidding? You see that emergency box on the wall? In case of disaster, break glass. What's inside, money? Nope, a one-way ticket to Brazil. At that moment, the referee raised his pistol to signify the end of the first half. <laughs> Lying flat on the ground, our heroes were safe momentarily, but the spectators in the end zone didn't make out as well. Manny, the Mud City Manglers just shot away the end of the stadium. What do you say to that? Adios, amigos. Boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom, 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 chicka, boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom, boom, boom. When our heroes finally made it under fire to their dressing room, gloom was written on every face. Except mine. I got despair written on mine. If only they hadn't stolen our football plays. Well, they left these in their place. Bullwinkle, those aren't football plays. Those are battle plans for the Civil War. Uh, 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 war between the states, you mean? Colonel Beauregard, you here? Us members of the League of Confederate Correctors is everywhere. They've noticed. I just can't abide the word civil. Well, here, maybe you'd like to have these plans. My pleasure. Ah, oh, Chancellorsville. There was a battle. What a cavalry charge. Looks more like an end run to me. Bullwinkle, that's it. If the manglers are going to use battle tactics on the gridiron, why can't we? Why can't we? Bullwinkle, you've done it again. Come up with a brilliant plan and like that. Yes, sir. Now, there's just that one little question. Yeah? What is it? This is the plan. Instead of football plays, we're going to use the battle plans of the... Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I was going to say war between the states. Us Confederate correctors can never be too sure. And so when the whistle blew for the second half of the game, it was a strange-looking team that emerged from the Wasamata U dressing room. Look at them fellas, Roof. They going to fight the war all over again. Shucks, we Southerners been doing that for years. The ball was snapped and Bullwinkle commanded. By the right flag, ho! But the game started up again, but this time the Mud City Manglers were no match for the military genius of the flower of the Confederacy. In one great flanking motion, the Wasamata team turned the end of the line and swept down the field. <gasps> Bullwinkle, you did it! There's the goal, just ahead! Hey! Bullwinkle, why are you stopping? Which direction are we running in, Corporal? Well, south, of course. 
Lord! Soothe, I thought so. These plans call for us to go north. And Bowwinkle turned and began dashing toward his own goal line. On he went, swivel-hipping his way through the opposition. Dag nabbit, you said civil. All right, war between the states, hipping his way through the opposition. Oh, what can save the game for our boys? Maybe we could get some new writers. Don't miss our next hysterical, historical episode. Bullwinkle buys a fence or tickets charge. <laughs> <laughs> That loud wailing noise you hear is the sobbing of thousands of bookmakers all over the country. For every one of these illegal gamblers bet that unbeaten Wasamata you would trounce a girls' team known as the Mud City Manglers. Little realizing that the Manglers were owned by Boris Badenov and had been coached by fearless leader himself. Hold that line, fellows. Oh, they won't retreat, Badenov. How can you be sure? The second team is right behind them with bayonets. Huh? See? The hapless bookies watched as the Manglers held Wasamata U scholars for the first half. <laughs> I'll never make another bet again as long as I live. Three to one, you do. You're on. You lose. Things looked a little brighter for our boys when Rocky decided to play the game according to some old battle plans of the, uh, the, the war between the states. Now you're talking, Yankee. Uh, but even this idea backfired when Bullwinkle decided to take the plan seriously. But Bullwinkle... Tunnel moves to you, Corporal. Oh, boy. What direction are we heading? South. You mean south? Yes, south. So what? This year plan says we march north. No, it is. And with flags flying, Bullwinkle began running toward his own goal line. Again. Disaster was imminent, but as fate would have it, the clock suddenly marked the end of the quarter. What's the trouble? Now the teams change goals. Moose is now running in right direction. Yes, at that moment, Bullwinkle dashed into the end zone for a touchdown. Hey, that's six points. But the referee, who was under some pressure, decided... No, only three points. Three! It's a handicap. After all, you're playing an all-girl team. You just wouldn't want to take advantage of a lady, would you? But you're not a lady. Sir, you is a cat. Penalty on the play. About time. How many yards do we get? Get? I'm penalizing Wasimata 30 yards, insulting a lady. Yeah, but that puts us behind our own goal line. That's a touchback. Right. Three points for Mud City. Three points? They get an extra point for being girls. Bullwinkle, we can't win. That's the general idea, Squirtle. And who are you? I'm the leader of the all-girl team. You are? I'm the field spitalny of the grid aisle. Yeah, but those aren't really girls. I know that. You know that. But does the referee know that? Do you know that? All I know is this fella behind me has a gun aimed right at my 50-yard line. Bullwinkle, that fella is intimidating a referee. Not very well. He doesn't look like one at all. No, I mean he's threatening that poor little guy's life. Well, that does it, Brock. Now my dandruff is up. Give me those battle plans. Ladies or no ladies, this is war. And it was... In the next ten minutes, what's the matter? You replayed the entire last two years of the Civil War. War between the states. And this time, the South won. In that case, you can call it the Civil War. Yes, just before the final gun sounded, Rocky crashed into the clear... ...and zoomed for the goal line. Bullwinkle, pass it to me! Ollie! Ah, uh, but that was the moment Boris Badenov had been waiting for. He quickly seized a large rock, painted it to look like a football, and hurled it right at the unsuspecting squirrel. Oh, don't miss our next heart-stopping episode, A Rock for Rock, or To Each His Stone. In our last quarter of uh, episode, our heroes were right on the verge of winning their game with the Mud City Manglers, or losing it, as the case may be. For Rocky the Flying Squirrel had just zoomed into the clear of the goal line and shouted back at Bullwinkle. The forward pass, Bullwinkle! Holly! Oop! But the oop had come from Boris Badenov, who had thrown not a football, but a cleverly disguised rock. Would you like a nice squirrel coat, fearless leader? You got one, Badenov? No, but I know somebody who won't be needing one in a minute. But let us stop everything right here! <laughs> And change our scene to an emergency meeting of the Bookmakers and Gamblers Protective Association. Fellow bookies, I would like to take advantage of this brief moment to remind you of our untenable position. A what? A lousy setup. 
Oh. Look, the squirrel is going to get clobbered, right? Right. Now, if he loses the game, we got to pay off the bat enough, right? Right. Wrong. There ain't enough money in the world to pay off at the odds we gave him. So what do we do, skip town? Would I suggest a cheap trick like skipping town? Sorry, Mickey. I suggest we skip the country. Uh, yeah, where do we, we go? Yeah, who want crooks like us? Follow me, boys. I know a country that'll take anybody. But the villains have reckoned without the keen eyes and instant reflexes of our furry hero. Hokey smokes, that's not a football. And Rocky swiftly zipped to one side. The heavy stone passed him and plummeted right for the timid referee, who still had a gun held at his back by one of Boris's thugs. Duck! Duck! Hey, what's he mean, duck, duck? Maybe there's a flock of them coming over. Hey, that ain't no flock of ducks. That's a... <coughs> rock. But where's Bullwinkle? You cold? Yes, out of the pall and smoke and flame that covered the gridiron gallop Bullwinkle Moose, the football dangling from his antlers. Quick, Bullwinkle, there's only a few seconds left. Now, what do we do, bad enough? Relax, fearless leader. Relax. Shoe, Mike, look at this diagram of the end zone. Hmm, what are the circles? Landmines. I've mined the whole end zone. Explosive landmines in a football field? Bad enough, that's a rotten thing to do. I just knew you would like it, fearless leader. Boris, I like to have you around. You're my kind of folks. Could I call you FL? I'm on my way up, Boris, and I'm going to take you with me. But alas for the villain's plans, Bullwinkle dashed into the end zone, turned and galloped all the way across it, and didn't step on one mine. Touchdown. Yay! Six points. What a man to win! Yay! So you had landmines in the end zone, eh, bad enough? I can't understand it, fearless leader. I could swear I had one right. <laughs> you were right, fearless leader. You're on the way up and I'm going with you. And so, what's the matter, you finished its season unbeaten. Only one fly in the ointment, Bullwinkle. Well, that's about par for ointment. What is it? I didn't like all those gamblers escaping to some other country. Ah, if Rocky had only known the Bucky's boat was even then approaching its destination. Well, there it is, man. Pottsylvania. And look, there's a reception committee to meet us. Hey, Charlie, five will get you ten, we goof. Bet heavily, Schweinhund. It's a sure thing. And so we come to the end of another fun-filled episode of Rocky and Bullwinkle. You know, Rock, he sure got some funny ideas about fun.